G'day, welcome to Scrounger's Workshop. As you can see, I've just picked up a nice new Hilux Ute, two-wheel drive. It's about the cheapest they make, but it does everything I need to do. And I've decided I want to put a crane on the back, help me lift things onto that tray. So to that end, I had a look around and I've decided I'm going to put a crane about where that green basket is. I looked around at the cheapies you can buy from China and I wasn't very impressed with them and I didn't want to end up with something that looked pretty ugly and weird as you can see about a month six weeks before I bought the car I bought a box of jacks at an auction about $15 and one of them was this little hydraulic ram uh, none of the jacks worked so while I pull this apart we'll chat as well and while I'm not great with hydraulics I thought at least I could pull this down and have a look, see if I can find out what was wrong with it. Because once I'd ordered the car, I knew I wanted a little crane and figured this would be perfect. So let's pull it apart and see what's going on with it inside. For you shifter fanatics, I know I'm using this the wrong way around. I should be having it mounted the other way. But I've always been a bit of a rebel. Hmm, well there's your problem lady, no fluid. And I think most of it came out of the little pump piston there. So we'll keep going, pull it apart, and see if there's anything damaged inside. Well, hmm. well, well there's a nice surprise. It's actually got bearings underneath it. I thought it would just be a sleeve. So that'll be handy. Hmm, this is the little pump body. Pumps the piston up and down and somebody's been here before. They've been taking a grinder to it for some reason. So I've given it a quick clean up. I left that gouge in the side of it. There's no point trying to fix that. It'll do more harm than good. So quick polish inside and out. Uh, polish up the piston. These things just run an O-ring with a little backing washer on them. So they're really easy to fix. Look at that, that's about all there is to it. Bit of hydraulic fluid, hydraulic sealant, screw it back in. And rather than gouging that little piston again, I just put it in the soft copper jaws in the vise. Just do it up that way. I've gone around and cleaned up everything inside, washed it all through re-oiled it. The cup on the end of this ram here is in good condition, it's not damaged. So it's just a matter of gently sliding that back in and putting the whole thing together, but uh, seems to be working pretty well at the moment. Hey, hey, it's all working. So I'll call that a winner winner chicken dinner and get on with putting it all back together again. Obviously, that piston's working. Doesn't seem to be leaking either. The gasket under this uh, head flange, I'll just put a bit of hydraulic sealant around there just to stop anything leaking out because this thing's going to be sitting at a constant 45 degree angle. So it may actually have oil sitting up in the head there somewhere. Now because this thing is going to be sitting out in all weather, I didn't want water pooling up around that little piston cylinder. So what I've done here is got some felt and I'm going to punch a hole in the middle of it and make a little felt washer, poke that down next to the piston and get that soaked in oil. That's going to help repel any water that wants to sit in there. I 
I also found this little rubber cap, so I punched a hole in the middle of it, same diameter as the piston, and I'll just use a bit of super glue to hold that in place. Next was this bracket that the jack handle goes into. As you can see, the fittings there are very loose and sloppy, but a quick squeeze under a 20 ton press soon took care of that. It's nice and snug again. Now to the bearings that sit underneath, and how much pressure have you got to put on a washer to press the bearings in like that? So anyway, they're good enough to reuse, but what I'm going to do is just clean up those washers on the lathe. Unfortunately, I lost the footage. This will give you an idea that I just uh, ground a cutting tool to suit, put them back in here, all fine, grease them up, use them again. So it's pretty well back together here. I've just hit it with a bit of primer, give it a quick hit with some wet and dry, and then a coat of silver paint to finish. Now I'm just reinstalling this bearing on the bottom, plenty of raspberry jam to go under there. Put that back together, that pivot's quite important. And what I found was this skinny little O-ring in my O-ring box, I always keep old O-rings, and that's again just to help keep the water out of that bearing. That'll be a snug fit and hopefully keep the rain out. That's it, jack's working how it should, no leaks, very happy with it. So that's part one put away, now to get on with the crane itself. So after going through my piles of steel, I've selected these pieces to actually make my hoist. Like most of us, the basic design's in my head, and it will change as needs require. This is a, an extremely heavy duty cold saw I've had for several years now, and it's just beautiful to use. This is actual speed, I haven't sped it up for the video or anything. It just cuts through steel like butter. Just love it. This is the two pieces for the mast. The rusty piece Oops. is the top of the mast, the painted bit is the bottom of the mast, and this piece of brass pipe should make the perfect shim so that there's no play between the two pieces. So I just need to cut that down the middle. Look at that, a nice snug fit there, and a nice snug fit in there, no play, just what I wanted. Making up a mount for a thrust washer, it'll sit on the bottom of the mast, and that way the pivoting piece of the mast will have something to pivot on rather than just metal on metal. Bit overkill, but hey, I've got the bearings, so why not? So that washer will go on there, and then the mast will press down on that washer, make the whole thing spin nicely. Now the next job is to make a cap, we'll sit over the bottom half of the mast here, and hopefully stop water getting down inside and rusting everything out. So I'll get onto that next, you'll see how it comes out. So it's pretty simple. That'll actually get welded into place, but uh, that'll stop the rainwater getting down in there. Second day, I've got the upper half of the mast pretty well finished. The boom is finished. The bottom half needs to have a base made for it, and I need to cut a groove in this piece for the pulley to sit in. I want the pulley to sit slightly high, I mean slightly low. Um, yeah, I want it to sit slightly low in that frame.
Perfect. Here I'm cleaning up the edges of a piece of plate I'm going to use for the base of the hoist. It's 10 mil plate. Back in the 1980s my dad built a 40 foot steel yacht in our backyard. And this is still a piece of the plate 40 years later I'm still using it. That uh, magnetic piece there is just a magnetic swarf collector I made. Pretty easy but gee what an easy way to clean up a piece of plate when you cut it out with an angle rider. Here's that piece of plate with the mast welded to it and some gussets for extra strength. Here's the basic pieces finished, sandblasted and powder coated. Uh, just ready, almost ready for assembly. I'll show you here the pulley, it's finished, the bearing's been pressed into place. It's ready to go. It was the same as this black one when I started. But if you look carefully you'll notice that the black one is flat at the bottom of the pulley because it's designed for a V-belt. A, a flat pulley like that will damage a cable. So I've machined that out to a nice radius groove. I've also taken down the outside diameter a little bit. And I've taken a little bit off the sides just to make the whole thing a bit more balanced and a little narrower, it'll fit into that boom a little better. Here's a little side story. This is where I store my grinders, right above my head on the workbench. The first one has a grinding wheel, this one has a cutting disc, this one has a flap disc. The blue Makita I got 40 years ago, my brother-in-law bought it new for me and it still works, but they're a dangerous little bugger. I bought the two Metabos after the Makita took a chunk out of my arm. The Metabos are rated at 2000 watts each. They have a fast break so they stop spinning very quickly when you put them down. And if they bite or, get, or grip, they stop instantly. So they're much better than the old Makita. What happened with the old Makita was I had a cutting wheel in it. I lost concentration for a second and it ripped across my wrist before I could even blink. It cut a few tendons but I had a marvellous surgeon put them all back together again. At one stage, it opened up so much that I could see the rest of the tendons, the white things, moving up and down in my arm when I wiggled my fingers. Thankfully, I had the best surgeon ever, and he put it all back together for me. And with the health system in Australia, didn't cost me a cent. Can't get any better than that, except to buy safe grinders. Final assembly of the frame now. Plenty of raspberry jam. Hopefully keep the moisture out of these bearings. Uh, to stop these shims walking up and down the shaft while I'm using the hoist, I've just put a couple of aluminium pot rivets in and filed them flush. Hopefully that'll lock them into place. So that's on, and while it's a bit snug now, there's no play in it. I'm happy about that. As well as the ram, I'm also going to need a winch. I've had this sitting on my shelf for years and years, and I thought one day I'll actually get to use this. Uh, and today's the day. So I'll get into cleaning this up now. Well done to Jared Industries down there in South Australia that made this. They still make these winches. I thought they were some kind of hard plastic grommets, but it actually turns out they're bronze. Well done.
that was easy. Here everything's been cleaned up and being put back together. The base has been powder coated, all the shafts cleaned up. Here my wife's son Jason fixed me up with some nice stainless steel cable to use. Thanks Jace. And this cable is called 7x7. Seven seven. So you've got seven bundles there and each bundle contains seven wires, giving me a total of 49 strands. That's all wrapped up into about a quarter inch bundle or six and a half millimetre bundle, which will be well and truly strong enough for what I'm doing. So this is a swage. This is one way of looping cable together. Now on cranes and things, a lot of the swages are big, thick aluminium ones. I got this from a boat shop, so they're actually nickel coated copper. And I just had to take it out a fraction to be able to push the wire through. And you normally put the tapered end to the back, I think. Here's a neat finish. And I'm gonna feed that cable through. Now what I want to do is pull this down onto the thimble. You don't want a hook pulling on just the cable. Bad for the cable. Very bad. Now the thing, one thing to remember is once you start squeezing down on this, they get longer. So we should pull that cable in nice and tight. And while I don't have a swaging tool, I do have one of these, which is a uh, pipe flaring tool. That's it, pipe flaring tool. And a 20 ton press. I think if I put that in there and give it a squeeze, should be good to go. So there's our first bite. Okay. Now we'll take the second bite, and that should tighten up this thimble too. Now this time, I can put the finishing crush on the it. That's tight. Like that. But I just want to finish this end off. This end here, and just close that end down. The reason you use a soft piece of metal like aluminium or copper, 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 is what happens is the cable's harder than the soft metal. And so the cable bites into the soft metal. And if you were to cut that swage open, it would have this pattern in it. And that's what stops it coming apart. So there you go. I'm pretty happy with that. You can see it's grabbed the cable there, not too rough. I just want to close this thimble down a little bit. There's so many things you can do with the press in your workshop. But just make sure that's just wanted to make sure that's tight around there that's beautiful and i'll just there's some just some little sharp edges there a file i'll take care of i'm really happy with that i can take everything i need to pick it up pick up with it i think this old recovery hook will be ideal i've had it for years never found a use for it but i can machine it down to how i want it uh, and it'll fit just nicely it's forged 
so it'll be well and truly strong enough. So that's what I'm going to use. Nice and steady, just to be sure. Here I'm looking at where the crane's going to mount, and it's going to sit right above either side of that top cross member. Those black uprights will be plenty strong enough, they're welded to the chassis, but obviously that cross member is going to be nowhere near up to strength. It's only about 1.2 mil thick. So I went and had a hunt around and I found a piece of zinc coated 3mm box section. That'll be much more suitable for what I need. It'll certainly take the weight that's going to be applied to it. All I need to do is look at getting the mounts off this cross member and mounting them to my new piece of zinc coated steel. Here I'm marking out pieces of tube to use as anti-crush sleeves. I'm using this adjustable scriber. Roller on one end, scriber on the other. Makes very good for a uh, tool for doing marking out as every time you mark it, they'll be exactly the same length, unlike a ruler or a tape measure where you can make mistakes. The bolt in the background is the bolts I'm going to be using. I've got four of those. They're 16 millimeter, very high tensile. But as I already had them, I decided they'd do the job nicely, thanks. So the new cross member's finished and just placed there loosely, the bolts aren't tight yet. And I'll start putting the crush, the anti-crush sleeves in in the washers so that everything pulls down nice and tight and nothing can bend or flex when it's got a load on it. You'll see the square tubes sitting on top, they've already got sleeves in them. And here are the sleeves that go above that box section with some thick washers just to help disperse the load under the tray. Slide the bolt through and repeat three more times. Then fix the nuts to them and that's the job done. And here it is all finished a couple of weeks later. I bought a cover for the winch from Jarrett. It was about $25 I think. Well worth getting. And it just swings back against the back window there and locks into place. Here's how it swings out over the side of the car, ready to load. You can pull the boom out further if you want. I'll never lift, try and lift more than about 250 kilos with it. Even though it's got a 15 to 1, 5 to 1 and 1 to 1 ratio, I really think 250 kilos would be the limit. There's a little nut there to stop that boom jamming in too far. And you just pull it out to where you want it, wind it in and lock it in place. So how well does it all work in the end, and how do I know how much I'm lifting? Well I'm glad you asked, and I'll show you now. To test it with this whacker packer I bought cheap and have been fixing up, which I'll have a video on. So first of all, I can wind it up here, and I can use this set of digital scales I picked up from my favourite junk shop. They're actually off a hoist for lifting patients in a hospital, so I guess they're pretty accurate. As you can see here, comes in at 65.4 kilos and I'm having absolutely no trouble lifting these on the 5 to 1 ratio so I'm very happy with that as I know it will lift anything I want to put on the back of the ute I did consider putting an electric winch on it, but really for the amount of work of wiring one in properly, for the amount of times I'm going to need it, 
I think I'll just leave it the simple way and leave it with the manual winch on it. Here's a typical example of what I'll be using the hoist for. This pallet jack weighs 65 kilos. So I picked up the heavy end with the hoist and just swung the end of the legs over. Just saved me busting the gut trying to lift the whole thing on my own. So that's it. Cheers and thanks for watching. I'll have more videos shortly.